This really big box has just arrived direct from the US. It's from the Virtual Doll Convention and it should contain my two graces and the different outfits I picked from the mix and match sale that they had. This is going to be really cool to open. There's so many different items that makes it all sorts of fun. Lots of dress up options. When I first ordered these I thought well $50 to ship to Australia that sounds like a lot. No, that's not even the doll cost. But when you have a look at the size of the box, covers me in front of the camera, I actually think that's pretty reasonable. Uh, so let's get this open. When these dolls came up for sale, I was pretty lucky because in Australia it was um, in the morning around, I think it was 9am. So I was up and ready to order and I did order straight away. I had a feeling that especially uh, this one here, which is Grace Glamour, I can see it's written on her box, was going to be very, very popular and I was right. She sold out within about, oh, it was very quick. It was like 20 minutes. There's the mix and match items. And the other Grace sold out in about two hours. Now, I... um. I did order both. I wasn't sure at first whether I was going to. I knew I wanted to order um, Glamour, but when it came to the natural, I hadn't decided yet because, well, you know, I, they're expensive and I really knew I wanted one. Uh, but when I put the postage cost in and I found that it was going to be a fair bit cheaper to get both together, I thought, why not? And then I was really glad to have done that because this one also sold out super quick. So I'm going to start by opening um, Amazing Grace Natural because she was my second choice and we'll have a look at what she's like. The really cool thing about this doll um, is that she has freckles. She's one of the first, um, she might think she might be the first Grace with freckles, but even when you go back to the Tonna Tyler line, there aren't very many dolls with freckles. There are a few. The dolls both come in this pretty classy new white box that says our Tonna Design. Um, and I like the box. It's not amazing. Obviously, you can't display your dolls in it, but I think it's it's nice. It has that real style um, that the Tonner dolls are going for, and that shows, um, you know, that they're a premium product. Grace comes in this foam layer. Her shoes here. She just has a little onesie. So these are basic dolls. Um, you know, they're designed for you to dress and redress, and that's one of the fun things about them. Um, they don't need to be tied in because of the foam padding. That's a really nice thing. Underneath the doll, um, once I've taken her out, you can see her stand also has its own little slots in there. The stand, if you saw my um, video about Nima and... Um, Elowen a few days ago. The stand is actually different um, because the doll's body is different, but it will have the same rubber seal there where it is a little bit better to heat, but I can find this one is actually sticking in fairly firmly without any work. So I think that's going to um, not need to be heated. So I stand is all ready instantly. And there it is. Grace herself is here. I'm going to take off her hairnet so we can have a look at her face and those freckles. So there she is. Um, can I get her in focus? It's a little bit hard to see the freckles in the light. I can see them myself, but I'm not really managing to capture them in the video. Maybe it would be nice if they're a little bit stronger. They are cute. They're just on her nose um, and just touching the side of her cheek. If I were doing this doll, because it is a sort of unique thing that she has freckles, I might give her a few more, covering a little bit more of her face. But I do like them. They're really cute. She's a wigged doll, so that means I can take off her wig and I might do a little swap later with um, Glamour Grace and see how their wigs go on each other. She can go on her stand there. And there she is. These dolls pose really beautifully and we will get an opportunity to see that um, in a few moments. The shoes, um, I'm quite happy to see these shoes don't have any buckles, which means they're going to be really nice and easy to put on. So I'm just going to do that. 
she's fully dressed. The shoes are nice and they're easy to get on because they don't have any buckles. But this one here, um, I have found the straps are a little bit too tight and her foot isn't properly going in. I might contact Rachel and ask about that, but it might just be a common problem with these shoes. The other one even hasn't quite gone on right. It is better. Um, this one, you can see her heel is sticking out the back. So I'm probably going to have to find her some different shoes for now and see if I can get a replacement for those. But there she is, all completed. And now we'll go and get her sister, uh, Grace Glamour, out. So exactly the same feeling as we open it. They come in this brown shipper that's labelled with the doll's name. We can just slide the box straight out from there. Exactly the same um, classy white box. Lift the top off. We've got the foam interior that keeps Grace nice and secure. Um, to look, her shoes look to be exactly the same as the other Grace, no surprise. Her onesie is also the same, as I said, these are basic dolls. Exactly the same thing, we're gonna pull her out. She has, because she's glamour, there are a few differences in her face uh, that make her a little bit more glamorous. So first of all, she's got the black wig. Um, it's quite cute, I like the, you know, little wave at the bottom. Um, there are a couple of flyaway hairs, but it looks good. She's got blue eyes, which I guess is meant to be a bit more glamorous. She's got brighter red lips, darker eyebrows to match her hair. Similar, obviously they have the same face mold. Grace dolls have the Sydney Chase face mold that has been adapted to the RTB 101 body, um, but it is the same classic Sydney face mold. Um, if she is one of my favourite faces from Robert Tonner, so I think it's nice that she has been reimagined and reinvented for the Grey Stolls. Uh, there she is in her onesie. I'm going to pop her shoes on as well and get her on her stand. Glamour Grace's shoes are a little bit better. They're still not a great fit, to be honest. So I think it is just a flaw in this design. Um, her heel just doesn't quite sit onto it. Maybe over time the um, leather strap will stretch because this one here is just a tiny bit tight. Her foot doesn't quite slide in. So I'm a tad disappointed about that because it basically means she will need to have different shoes. And I didn't buy any shoes from the mix and match sale because I tend to find the shoes... Um, from VDC are a little bit expensive. They're cheaper direct from um, Facets by Marcia. Um, if you go and have a look there. Here she is. I felt like the wig in the promo photos was a little bit more manicured. I think I might need to work on this wig later a little bit to, to make it sit as nicely as the promo photos. But it is pretty. And seeing them side by side, they're both beautiful. I might actually prefer um, natural just a little bit. Maybe it's the freckles. Maybe it's the red hair. Um, I think they're both really nice. I can see the, you know, the appeal of the striking contrast between the red lips of Glamour Grace and her black hair. But I guess I'm liking the subtle tones um, of the amazing Grace natural. Now let's have a look at how they go in each other's wigs. I actually love them in the swapped wigs. I don't know why they look really beautiful. I think this Grace, she just has a bit more of a playful look and I love her with the little Oh, I'm not sure how to call that, but the, the little buffy bits of hair around there, I think that goes really nicely. Glamour Grace looks kind of haughty with this um, reddish brown wig, and I think it really goes nicely with her blue eyes. Um, maybe a slightly more natural colour with the blue eyes. I'm going to open up now the mix and match clothes, and let's see what we can put onto these girls to wear. put the girls back into their original wigs to try on the clothes just so we can get that style um, to match. I, I have taken off their lace teddies, but I will just say um, 
these were incredibly difficult to get off. Um, obviously, we've got the button to undo, but they're so close um, fitted around this area that on the rubbery um, piece here really took a lot of care to get off. So if you are undressing them for the first time, just do it really, really carefully or you do risk to tear that teddy. Now, I think that this dress is going to be a nice one to try on Grace Glamour first. I'm just going to go with her black hair, and I will pick maybe this outfit as something a bit more natural to go on natural Grace. Do really like both of these sets. I think they suit these girls really well. Um, they were a bit difficult to get on. The black dress, not too bad. I did find the zip just a tiny bit fiddly at the end, but it was pretty good. The yellow outfit, to be honest, everything was pretty frustrating. The skirt has quite a narrow waist. It's elastic, so it's fine on her, but it was quite hard to get her feet in. The top needed to go over her head, so I had to really take her wig off first. And the belt I found really, just really fiddly to do up. But they look great when they're on. The shoes, um, I, I have mixed feelings about the shoes. Um, obviously, these are their same original shoes. And the good thing about them is that they go with both outfits. I can see they're sort of halfway between glamorous and casual. So they kind of go with everything, but they just want to fall off. This one, you know, even after fiddling with it, the shoe is really not on. So I think it's a nice idea, but it just didn't quite work. But I love the outfits. I think this skirt will look great with a different top as well, but I actually do like it with the top. I'm not usually into this sort of peplum look. Um, I hate it on myself um, and I don't much like it on dolls where it flares out of the waist, but I think it looks nice on her. But let's have a look at something else as well.
again, I do really like both these outfits. I've just added the cameo necklace to what Grace Glamour is wearing. Uh, and she's got this stylish purse um, and, and bonus wallet there, which I think is cute. I thought it added a bit of glamour to the outfit. I think the outfit might look better, this one on um, Grace Natural. I thought it maybe would, you know, these little frills and stuff would have enough glamour to go with this doll, but I think it's probably still better on the other. Um, this one was nice. The top is quite tight. I think it's probably better on Elowen than on Grace, but it does go on and I think it's very cute. Everything goes together well. But I think, it, yeah, it's a bit more natural. This one here, it's really cute. Um, but as you saw, it was so difficult to get on. Um, I, I don't want to do it again. I don't even want to take it off now, although I will. Um, but yeah, it was just a real struggle to get on her. It looks adorable on... Um, but was it worth it? Probably not. I think I'd, I'd only do it again if I absolutely had to. I do think that it will be easier to take off than to get on. So I'm going to do that and I'll try on the last few items I've got. I, I'm going to put Glamour Grace into this set because her set, I think, although it's beautiful, it doesn't suit her so well. And let's leave that skirt on natural and try the other items on instead of the frustrating top. The last two outfits are also really cool. I'm really happy because all of them, I think, look great on the dolls, even when I wasn't totally sure in the packet. This one here is a lot of fun putting on. Um, this one I saw styled by Christopher with the... Um, I'm not really sure what to call this, but this piece being able to be worn as either a cape or an overskirt. I think it looks nice as either, but just because I probably wouldn't wear a cape, I've put it as an overskirt for her. Do note, I showed that the Velcro only just does up on both the top and the skirt. Obviously, that one is made for Ella and Wilde more than Grace, but it does you know, it is just enough. So that's really cute on. And when I see Grace Glamour in this, I'm actually really, she's warming on me a lot. Um, I'm starting to feel, I'm not sure which Grace I like better, um, which is tricky, but you know, uh, that's, that's what putting them in different clothes makes you think. That's beautiful outfit. This one here shows again the joy of the mix and match because I've put her in three things that have nothing to do with each other. And again, she looks pretty good. She's a bit wobbly because I haven't put her shoes on um, this time. I am a little bit frustrated by all of the tops that need to go on over the head because they are challenging to get on. This one was the easiest, but even so, I would have rather that it had a closure. So Grace is a really high quality doll. Both versions, I think, absolutely beautiful. And there's so many great things about them. Um, you know, straight from the packaging, they look fantastic. I love that classy white box. I love the way they're couched in the foam. And when you take them out, there's all sorts of things to admire about them. The really good quality workmanship, the fantastic posing, and of course, the playability that comes with changing their outfits. 
both dolls are really beautiful um, with you know all those wonderful things about them I'm finding it really hard now that I've had them out of the box and have been playing with them to choose which one I do like best out of the two they're both gorgeous um, there are other things I don't like about them the shoes are, I've ready to say I hate I was just struggling to get them on and off you know there was really no two ways about it they don't stay on they barely fit the dolls so that's a pity because it essentially means that you're required to buy new shoes with a nearly $200 doll straight out of the box um, the other thing I was a little bit frustrated by in this box opening that I didn't mention as I was going through it was the really large amount of packaging that came with the mix and match. The graces themselves, wonderful. The packaging is pretty simple um, and, you know, you know, clean and clear. But the mix and match items, every time I opened something new, it was a new plastic packet. And then sometimes they had another plastic packet inside it with an extra item in it. And as someone who cares about the environment, that didn't sit well. It was not useful. Maybe it was meant to make the experience more fun. I don't know. But for me, it was just, you know, an added level of frustration. When it came to dressing the dolls, um, I do wish that Grace didn't have the rubbery bottom piece. I'm not quite sure what its purpose is. Maybe it's meant to make her legs pose a little bit better. But when it comes to dressing and undressing her as well, it makes things really hard. Um, so anything which was elastic or slid on or off, it just didn't work well. And then when it came to putting the tops on, um, again, this is more to do with the mix and match than the dolls themselves. But the elastic items just were really getting on my nerves. Uh, it's very hard to get them over her head. I had to be taking her wig on and off, um, which, you know, in the long run is probably going to wear out that Velcro more. And some of it was just incredibly hard to get on, no matter what I did. In particular, that flowery top, I never want to put that on again, even though I thought it was beautiful. And so that's a real pity. Um, so overall... Uh, they're wonderful. Um, I don't, I, I guess one thing that, uh, that doesn't sit perfectly with me is that she is just a Sydney Chase. I mean, she's a beautiful Sydney Chase, but there are lots of Sydneys out there. And Cindy, Sydney is one of my favourite face moulds. I've got lots of them um, who I might show another time. And is she the most beautiful Sydney that's ever been made? No. Um, she's nice and she does have a lot of versatility, more versatility than most of the Sydneys, but there are more beautiful ones. So, you know, if you love Grace, go and look at the other Sydneys. I'm not saying don't buy Grace. Absolutely. She's fantastic. And the wonderful thing about her is that she's now, you know, so you don't have to go and hunt and hope that you can find one um, on eBay. She's, well, actually you do because, <laughs> because she sold out but if you sign up for the BDC and wait until next time she's available you will be able to get her um but you know that's a great thing about her but there are other Sydneys as well and you know they're fantastic they don't necessarily have the RTB 101 body and that is beautiful I would say uh, and I'll, I'll do a bigger comparison at some point but the RTB 101 body is not only the most realistic but also the most flexible um and poseable body that Robert Tonner has made uh so that's a great thing about this doll uh when it comes to the mix and match items maybe read up the info as to to whether there is a closure or whether they uh, slide on with elastic because for me that made a huge difference bigger than I thought um, it didn't really bother me whether the clothing was made for Eloin or for Grace if it doesn't quite fit her ah, that's okay you can see she's still in this and uh, that doesn't matter but the velcro versus elastic really did make a difference um, overall this was great fun and I'm really happy with my new Graces um, if you've enjoyed my video, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel, like, and leave a comment. Thank you.